Sylvester told you about the hourglass's limiter, but he didn't warn you about what happened to your father when he removed it. Mr. Pemberton also told me to protect my parents. But what he was really getting you to do was push them away. After all the help they've given me, that was a mistake. Sylvester said not to let up on Cindy, and I never gave her a chance. Why would Sylvester purposely give you all bad advice? To keep us distracted. To break us apart. To weaken us. To take our confidence away. He took the staff from me. He told me I wasn't worthy of it. Well, he's dead wrong. Then why couldn't I bring it back to me, Mom? Maybe Sylvester wanted the staff for himself this whole time. Then why not just take it from court in the first place? Why wait? We have to find Pat. How was the vigil? There's still been no sign of Mr. Dysinger. Well, I have some news. Starman has agreed to let go of our past differences. That's great. Yeah, it is, but I'm afraid that Courtney and her friends aren't quite so willing yet. We'll need to convince them. Cameron. Something has happened to Courtney's stepfather. What? He's been killed by that aberration of science, the ultra-humanite. Hot shaft! Come on. Mike's not answering. Pat's phone's going straight to voicemail. Zeke's got Stripe fixed back up, but he hasn't seen Mr. Dugan since he went to the McKenz. Okay, so let's start there. Cameron? Starman's at the junkyard. What? Are you looking for him? Uh, how do you know that? He's there. Sorry, my family's coming. I have to go. Wait, Cameron. Hello? I don't like lying to her. This is the best way to offer Courtney our help during this trying time. Face to face.